We are a go for launch. Welcome to the ready, set, go launch ed virtual Q and a session for elementary families who have selected the face to face model for instruction in the fall. We are excited to have you tonight. Please make sure that you have muted your microphone as we can hear some of you in the background and that will be a challenge as we are presenting. This, at, this evening, we are going to be presenting information for teaching and learning, but we'll also include information for a broad array of departments, including asset and risk management, communications, facilities, ITS, safety and security, and finance. So my name is Marielle Milano, and I am the Director for Digital Curriculum with Orange County Public Schools, and I am joined this evening by my colleague. And Maurice, would you like to introduce yourself? Just very quickly, I'll introduce myself. My name is Maurice Dragon. I am the Senior Director of Digital Learning. So we are going to go ahead and share with you all of the information you will need to know to be comfortable with uh, what's going to happen at the start of the school year. So the first thing we want to tell you is that the LaunchDead Digital Learning Program is not new. Many families don't realize that the LaunchDead Digital Learning Program actually began in 2013 when we started deploying one-to-one -one devices to students at our first seven schools. We're now in our seventh and eighth cohorts, and we are so excited that in August 2020, our entire school district will be one-to-one -one for the first time K-12. And the timing couldn't be better because we are starting school with students at home due to COVID-19. This session is for any parent, student, or family member who has an interest in what's going to be happening with the face-to-face -face model at Launchstead Schools next year. Now, in this session, we're going to address both what will happen in the first two weeks of school, as well as what will happen with the face-to-face -face model starting August 21st. OCPS is committed to getting families just what they need just in time. So in this session, we're going to be focused on the what of digital learning. What exactly should you expect? And later on, before um, the end of the first week of school, your schools will be hosting a digital open house that focuses on the how and really goes deeper with parents on how exactly to perform each of the functions they need to be successful in a digital learning environment. After today's session, you should be able to understand what digital learning is and be able to identify the changes it'll bring to your family. We're going to break down some of the most common questions families have about digital learning. And generally, these questions fall into three broad categories. What is digital learning and what will it look like face to face and at home? What changes can I expect as a parent and what can I do to help prepare my family? Since this session is all about digital learning, let's start by identifying exactly what digital learning is. The state of Florida actually has a definition for digital learning, and they have for many years. The state of Florida defines digital learning as high quality content in a digital format and online courses, personalized digital learning for students, a way for students to demonstrate what they know in coursework, high quality content in instructional materials that are available in a digital format online, and blended learning courses. They also define digital learning as having high quality digital instruction with teachers, having infrastructure that supports digital learning, the online administration of some forms of classroom assessment, and providing digital tools for creation, collaboration, and communication. So digital learning is defined as much more than just a device. When your child's school year begins, they will be distributing devices for every student for the very first time. And parents can expect changes to the classroom environment, classroom curriculum, classroom instruction, and the homeschool connection. First, let's talk about the changes to the instructional model. You might be wondering when students will use technology. And the short answer is, especially at the beginning of the school year, in most things that they do. From August 10th to the 20th, students will be learning at home, and students will use technology to support learning every day, 
with whole group, small group, and individual instruction, but it will be facilitated by a remote teacher. Beginning August 21st, or whenever students are able to return face-to-face, -face, students will continue to use the same technology to support learning daily, but at their school, in whole group, small group, and individual instruction, and now they'll have an in-person teacher. That's called blended learning because it involves a blend of face-to-face -face instruction and it occurs at a traditional brick and mortar school. But what does blended really mean? Oftentimes elementary families worry that that means that there's gonna be no books or paper in the classroom. And Maurice and I are former elementary school teachers and we know that that's just not true. It will not mean that students never use paper again, whether they're at home or at school. This instructional model moves classrooms from what I like to call paper full to paper purpose. They're gonna use paper instructional materials like textbooks, et cetera, when they provide some functionality that the electronic or digital format doesn't, or when it's more appropriate for students to use paper either developmentally or because of their age. So what type of textbooks will students receive? especially if it's not paperless. So if um, our elementary students will continue to be provided with their paper-based textbooks and their consumable textbooks that can be used in addition to the online textbooks that are provided through our district Launchpad. And Launchpad is not a new platform either. This has been around for many years. Your students can access it through Google Chrome um, on their laptop or through the Classlink Launchpad app on their iPad. Inside of the Launchpad, they are able to click on an icon called My Backpack. And inside of the My Backpack app are all of their textbooks, just like they were putting them inside their physical backpack. So now let's talk specifically about what the learning environment will look like from August 10th to the 20th, because we know that you have a lot of questions about the Launched at Home program, especially because you initially chose face-to-face. -face. So by far, the most common question we've received is, will the district provide a device for my child? And the answer is yes. Students in grades K and 1 will receive an iPad tablet that comes in a case, and that case has a little kickstand in the back of it. There will not be, however, a headphone and stylus provided, and you may want to purchase those as a parent. In grades two through five, or if any of you have children with older siblings, also in grades six through 12, students will receive a traditional laptop with a web camera. Again, headphones are not included, but you may want to consider purchasing those on your own. We also understand that students will need to have internet connectivity to engage in lessons at home, especially during those first two weeks. And many parents have asked if the district is going to be providing internet connectivity at home. Well, there are a few options to support families. First off, there's a map of free community Wi-Fi available at digital.ocps.net. There's also information about low cost internet that can be available for families who qualify through Spectrum, Comcast, CenturyLink, and other local cable providers. Also new this year, K through five students can apply for limited hotspots on a first come first serve basis. Those hotspots come with 10 gigabytes or more of complimentary monthly data. Another question we've been asked frequently is about safety, which we know is a big concern for families. And many have asked if the internet will be safe for students to use at home. And the answer is yes. Uh, within OCPS, internet is filtered even when students are at home when they're using a district device. The internet filtering and security settings are set in compliance to make sure that we comply with the CIPA or Child's Internet Protection Act regulations, even when students are at home. Internet access is logged so that we can see what students are doing on the device and make sure that they are safe. We've been asked a lot about what exactly the day will look like for a launched ed student. 
So we're going to see if we can share a brief video that explains it to you. While every teacher's classroom is different, we want to make sure that this video was provided to give you just a brief insight into what it might look like when students return to school in the fall. The OCPS Launch Ed at Home model is one of three options for families in the fall 2020 semester. Each day, your child will log into Canvas at the same time as the first bell would normally ring at school. Your child's teacher will take attendance each morning and your child will go to school live five days a week. Once it is time for learning to begin, your child's teacher will be able to share lessons live from their desk or the board in their class with your child at home. Your child will follow the same schedule they would at their elementary school, but they will not be listening to direct instruction all day. Your child will alternate between their teacher's live lesson and time for independent practice. Their work will be graded and students will receive progress reports and report cards. Children will also get to enjoy special areas. When their class takes a break for lunch or recess, so will your child so they can stay active and healthy. You can even pop up to your enrolled school to pick up a grab and go lunch during the break. When the last bell ends for the day, students can complete their homework offline using consumable workbooks provided by the school when you pick up your laptop at the start of the school year. To learn more about the Launched Ed at Home model and view a sample day in the life of an elementary school student, please visit reopening.ocps.net. Key points are that students will follow a traditional bell schedule and begin and end the school day at the same time. Other key points include that students will have daily live lessons in elementary school in core subject areas like English language arts, science, and social studies. They'll also be able to take a break for recess and lunch at the same time as their peers. As well, they'll be able to attend special areas like art, music, and physical education on the same schedule as their peers. The school day will end at three o'clock or whenever school is normally scheduled to end at your school site. A lot of our families have asked specifically about whether or not we're trying to purchase something new with the LaunchDead at Home platform. And the answer is no. The LaunchDead at Home platform uses Canvas, our district adopted learning management system, which has been in place for several years. It combines Canvas with video conferencing platform, either Microsoft Teams or Big Blue Button, which are our two approved platforms. If you're not familiar with using an LMS in school, an LMS is kind of like a virtual school building. It's an online hub. It's basically the place where they will go to start their day, just like walking in the door of a school physically each morning. Once they're inside of Canvas, they'll be able to see buttons for all of their classes. There might be a button for third grade and a button for music and a button for art, and each one of those buttons is like a classroom. Here's an example of what's behind one of those buttons. This is an elementary sample course, and you'll notice that for your students, there will be buttons for things like class information or news, and then there'll be buttons with information for parents, a place to get help. You'll see here in the middle that they have a, a, a light bulb for learning areas or lessons. And then at the very bottom, you'll see here that there's an orange icon for live lessons. Live lessons are like what your teacher teaches in the classroom every day. And they, because you're following a traditional bell schedule, they will happen at the same time that they would have happened at school. When students click on the Live Lessons button, it will take them into the web conferencing platform to see their teacher. So in that way, web conferencing is similar to what would happen in live instruction in the classroom. So Microsoft Teams or Big Blue Button is where they will go for their live lessons. So what does it look like to be in a live lesson when you're a student? In a live lesson, students can see the teacher and teachers can see the students. 
They can also share content with their students. For example, the teacher in this picture is showing teachers how to find something in their learning management system course. Students are also able to unmute their microphones and turn on their webcams so they can talk and see their teachers and talk with their peers. Sometimes parents wonder what it will be like for teachers to really monitor what's going on if they're not in front of them. So, it's important to remember that while it may not look the same as it does in a classroom, teachers will be able to see what is happening because students will be on camera during the lesson, and teachers can also ask students to share their screen. In some platforms like Google Docs or Nearpod, they can actually see what your students are doing in real time and watch them working and help them. You might be thinking to yourself, how will my student learn to interact online? Or how will they learn to be safe online? Well, reading online textbooks and using a learning management system is just one of the things your students will learn this year. In the past, our students had to focus on learning things like math and science and social studies. But to be future ready, our students also need to learn how to be digital citizens. To be a digital citizen, you need to be literate in technology applications and online information. So at the start of the school year, your teachers will help your students learn how they can be safe and responsible online. They'll also teach them how to use the digital tools. There are special lessons for digital citizenship that your teachers will teach your students in an age appropriate way in each grade level, K through five, Students will have access to many new tools, and it's going to be important for parents to understand how that access might change what they see every day. Your students might be asked to take notes online. They might do that in a program called Google Docs, or they might be asked to make a presentation in something called Google Slides. They can even draw in Google Drawings or share their ideas in Google Forms. The possibilities are endless, and the best part about digital tools in the cloud is that students can't lose their work, and it's available 24-7. For the first two weeks, your students will also be able to keep all of their work in an online folder because they're away from their teacher. That online folder is called Google Drive, and that's a bit where they'll keep all of their work, kind of like a folder in their backpack and then they'll submit it to their class in Canvas. If you're like me, I have four daughters, and some of them are still in elementary school. You might be used to looking for all of the information in the backpack in your child's planner. Well, for the first two weeks of school, you won't have that, but you can access the calendar in Canvas LMS. This is really exciting news for families because it will give you the information just when you need it. You can see here on the screen that all the assignments the teachers give are color-coded by subject area. It will also be very easy for you to communicate with your child's teacher during the first two weeks through Canvas. P parents can download the Canvas Parent app, and that will allow you to review upcoming assignments, check on grades, and receive announcements for your child's course. The Canvas Parent um, app is available on iOS or Android or through the OCPS Parent Portal, which is where you already go to check Skyward. It is important to remember that you do need to have an OCPS Parent Portal account to get started with Canvas Parent. I love the mobile app for Canvas Parent because it allows me to set settings for each of my students. I can set settings, for example, if I want to get an alert every time my child misses an assignment or when they get um, an assignment grade that's below a certain level. Are you the kind of parent that texts more than you talk? I know I am. If you're one of those parents, you're in luck because you can also choose how to receive your notifications. So you can choose to receive notifications for things like in, in your email or in text message or in Twitter. Let's pause now and address some questions. Maurice has been answering questions in the chat box, I'm sorry, in the Q&A box, but I'll also answer some that have popped up in the chat box. You can ask us questions about anything on the left-hand side of the screen. 
Unfortunately, because of our areas of expertise tonight, we won't be able to address questions specifically about health and safety procedures for COVID-19, staffing questions, anything that deals with our legal department or questions that are specific to an individual student IEP or 504 plan. Let's see what's in the chat box. So there is a question here about extended day. So during the first few weeks of school, um, you will need to reach out to your specific extended day provider to see if they're gonna be offering any childcare options during that time. Um, but in general, after August 21st, extended day providers will still be able to provide their normal practices. Maurice, is there anything that's come up in the question and answer box that you think is important for us to be aware of? So far, just sharing that students will receive iPads in K and 1, and in 2 through 5, they will receive a laptop device. Students will take those devices home with them daily once, once they start school. Um, I think as, as Marilla has shared, the, the Launch Ed program we've had now for the last six years, it is our yearly rollout where we equip schools with technology and other resources. And so while there is some overlap with Launch Ed at Home overall where those same resources are being used, even if your child is in face-to-face, -face, they're gonna use some of those same resources of the laptop, Launchpad, Canvas, and potentially some video conferencing. Awesome, thanks Maurice. One of the questions I just saw pop up in the chat box was if your students will get a schedule for the day in elementary school so you know when they need to appear in each lesson. And the answer is yes, your teacher will post a classroom schedule inside of their classroom course so that you'll know exactly what the schedule for the day is. There was another question that popped up about if teachers will be teaching face-to-face -face students and launch ed students at the same time. So remember, for the first 10 days, everyone is a Launch Ed student because everybody's at home. Once parents have the opportunity to send students back to school on the 21st, then some classes will have all face-to-face -face students in them, and some classes will remain totally at home based on parent preference with all Launch Ed at home students. A few classes may have students from both groups in them and teachers will be able to talk with students at home at the same time that they talk to students at school. It is the intent of schools to provide the same teacher all year, but it depends on whether or not that teacher is able for their own personal health reasons to return to the classroom. So please check with your child's principal about specific situations. Let's go ahead and keep moving, and then we will stop again to answer questions in just a few moments. Now, everyone on the call chose the face-to-face -face model, so I know you're super excited about August 21st and beyond, so let's talk about it. After the first two weeks, students will be able to return to campus. And we know you still have questions about what that will look like. And one of the first questions we know you have is, what's gonna happen to the device that students were using for the first two weeks? Well, the answer is, it will stay your child's device. And for the first semester, which goes from August through December, students will take that device back and forth with them from home to school each day in their backpack. That way they'll be ready for whatever happens. The facilities team is also working hard to make our classrooms more exciting by installing document cameras that allow teachers to project different specimens and things that they're working on live on the big screen like the butterfly you see here. In addition, our non-interactive whiteboards that you're used to seeing teachers write on with dry erase markers will be replaced by interactive smart panels that allow students to interact with lesson content from the teacher. You might notice that those smart boards are actually mounted pretty low in the classroom. In kindergarten, for example, they're only 30 inches off the ground. And that's so that students can touch all parts of the board and interact and move things around in their learning. You may also notice that each classroom is going to be equipped with in-ceiling speakers and audio enhancement. That's going to make it easier for teachers and students to hear clearly when teachers and students are wearing a mask in the classroom. 
You'll also notice that funny blue looking microphone. That's a, a throwable microphone. They can be easily wiped off between uses, but allows for students to stand at a socially distanced way and be able to toss the microphone from one to another and collaborate and hear each other easily. Now, if you were to peek inside your child's classroom next year, you might also notice some changes to the way the work looks first thing in the morning. You might remember that when students came in last year, there was normally work written on the board that said morning work or something for them to get started with right away. It might still be on the board, but it will probably also be posted in Canvas so that students can complete work both on paper and online. The benefit to doing this is when teachers engage their students in polls or other online questions, they can check where their students are before they start the day without having to wait to collect papers and grade them. It helps them teach your children better. Now, you're also probably used to seeing teachers up and walking around the room. Well, that's not going to change. They're gonna to continue to supervise your students. But when students are using laptops in the classroom, it's important that the teacher is supervising them on the technology as well. And so teachers will be able to also carry their laptop around and see what teach students are doing on their screen. They'll be able to see each student's screen as a little tile to be able to redirect them as needed and make sure they're safe. And if your child needs a hotspot, they can apply for a hotspot in one of two ways. When students log on to Launchpad, which again is kind of like that entry point for our kiddos at launch.ocps.net, they'll be able to click on a tile that says Hotspot Request, and they can request one for home. As a parent, you can also request a hotspot for your student by visiting digital.ocps.net. There was an additional question about if a teacher is teaching in a blended uh, environment where there are students that are face-to-face -face and students that are at home after August 21st, will they be able to see the students from home and those students see the kids face-to-face? -face? Well, that's kind of a tricky question because it depends on how the teacher's classroom is set up. But in general, they will be able to see the students who are at home and in the teacher's camera will be trained on the teacher, um, but there may be some instances, especially in collaborative group work, where they will see some other students in the classroom. All elementary schools will get iPads and laptops, including our newly built schools like Summer Lake and Sunshine. Um, this is a great question. If you're a brand new student to OCPS, how do you know how to log into the laptop? So the login for our laptops are the student number, and your school will provide you with your school student number. Um, the password for the laptop at elementary school is a standard configuration, and your school will provide you that information as well. At the middle school and high school level, our students set their own passwords. There was another question here about what might happen if a device was damaged. So accidents happen, and we certainly understand that. When you first pick up your device, there is no charge to take the device home. Everyone takes the device home. If a student damages a device, there is a fine that can be assessed if it was an accident or intentional damage. The fine structure is posted at the beginning of each year. But students can continue to use their laptop and they don't lose access to a laptop or have to wait for the fine to be paid before it is repaired. Okay, so the fine is more of a behavioral deterrent. Here's a great question. Can students play outside for recess? So um, when students return on the 21st, uh, we do anticipate that they will have time for activity outside, though recess may look different and not all equipment may be available. And they will also be able to visit uh, physical education um, in the, the, uh, the school. If they're learning at home, they will also be able to take a break for recess and attend physical education. Uh, there is another question about whether or not students will eat in the cafeteria or in the classroom. Um, I do believe that that is still being determined um, with the availability of teachers, but it is unlikely that they will eat in the cafeteria the way that they used to last year. 
if anything, um, they will be definitely practicing social distancing and making sure students are at a safe distance. So here's a question about state testing. We got the same question this morning. As of right now, we have heard no information from the state about any changes to EOC or FSAs this year. So my motto is always to plan for the worst and hope for the best. So our plan as a district is to continue preparing as those students will take the FSA or EOCs until the state provides us different information. All of our students will be receiving a device before, on or before Monday. Our schools are working very hard to make that happen as obviously the date for school was uh, moved up. Many of you will be hearing about device distribution at your school that will occur late this week. If you haven't heard from your school by Wednesday, I would reach out to them and make sure that they have the, your most up-to-date contact information and find out how to get a device for your child. Here's a great question. If for some reason you don't get a device in time or maybe you wanted to use your own device at home, can you access Canvas from a different laptop or your own iPad? And the answer is yes. Canvas is a web-based program and students can access it through Launchpad at launch.ocps.net on any device, including your own private device at home. Um, Tatiana has a question about whether or not parents will be going into classrooms on August 21st. In general, the new safety procedures that have been put out by the school district indicate that parents will not be able to access classrooms on August 21st. They will, however, be able to drop off in front of the school and potentially access the front office. Oh, here's a great question from Amber, and I'm going to ask Maurice to reach out to her separately. Um, Summer Lake is a new school, and it may not yet be listed in Canvas Parent, but I'm sure Maurice may have some more information he can share with you offline about when that'll be available. And the last question I'll answer before we move on is, what do students do if there's technical difficulty? That is a great one. So there's a couple important things to be aware of. Inside of Canvas, there is actually a student help button where they can click on that button and a Canvas um, representative can help assist with any problem that might be happening at home. And parents can go ahead and submit a ticket through that and kind of share what's going on if the issue is related to Canvas. If it's not related to Canvas, like maybe you got the blue screen of death or something's happening with your laptop, you can put in a student tech request at studenttechrequest.ocps.net. But don't worry, we don't expect you to remember that address. It'll come on a sticker on each device so that you can ask your student to go to that website and be able to submit a ticket. There's also a link to that same website, studenttechrequest.ocps.net, on Student Launchpad. We also do have um, information on common troubleshooting. That's a great question, Cindy, and that will be available for parents and shared with teachers. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and keep it moving. So once your students come back to school, one of the questions we keep hearing online is, is there enough internet bandwidth at the school to keep it all from crashing? And the answer is yes. So students will have access to Wi-Fi in all instructional areas. We've added hotspots all across the school. We've also increased the bandwidth of available data at your school. And when students return to school, their internet is still going to be filtered the same way it was at home. And things that you might be used to accessing at home like YouTube will not be accessible to elementary school students. We'll still continue to log all student internet access on their device. When students return to school, they won't lose access to their Google Drive. They'll be able to continue to use all the digital tools they use at home. But now they'll also be able to use some of those school supplies that you're bringing in, like pencils, papers, crayons, poster boards, all of that stuff in addition to digital tools. So they'll have a really rich learning experience. And we hope that access to all of these awesome digital tools is going to give our students the opportunity to do way more than complete boring worksheets. They're going to create great digital products. Over the course of this school year, they're going to learn how to create really dynamic things like digital ebooks 
infographics, e-newsletters, and maybe one day even their own website. The possibilities are truly endless when we provide our students with the right tools. Now, when students come back to school, they're still going to keep all of their work in their Google Drive when it's done on the laptop. But they also might do some work that's not on the computer, and that can be stored in their normal binders and folders and things like that. As a parent, you're also not going to lose access to your Canvas calendar. You'll still be able to check Canvas for updates from your child's teacher. But your school may also provide you a paper planner that can be used as a backup. You'll still be able to access the Canvas Parent app after the 21st, too. You won't lose access to any of that information. So there's some questions about students carrying large supplies into school. Each school will provide different provisions for that, but for safety um, and health-related reasons, uh, parents will not be able to access classrooms on the 21st. You're, you will find out what teacher your child has as we approach Meet the Teacher at the end of the week. Many of our schools are hosting that event on Thursday or Friday. And so if you haven't heard from your child's school by Thursday morning, I would reach out to them and see if they can give you a quick update. The school will be taking care of helping kindergarten students find their way from the front of the school to their classroom. I was a kindergarten teacher for many years, and even before COVID, there were some circumstances where we had to make sure that uh, parent access was limited to the school for safety reasons. So kindergarten teachers will assist by picking up students at the front of the school or other support personnel. So don't worry about that. They will not be wandering the halls alone. There's a question about attendance, and this is an important one. There's a lot of, um, I think, confusing information about attendance out there. So let's clear it up, okay? If you are attending, uh, whether or not you have selected the face-to-face -face model or the launch dead model, we are going to start taking attendance on August 10th if that is the first day your child begins attending school. And that's the way it's always been. If they log into a live lesson on that first day of school, we're going to count them as present. Now, if they do not start attending school on August 10th, we will start marking them present on the first day that they do attend either a live lesson or face-to-face -face instruction. And again, that's not new for COVID. That's the way it's always been. But it is important for parents to remember that those first nine days are not free time or enrichment. They're learning days where students will be covering content. And teachers are not expected to skip over things for the first nine days. And it is important that any student that can attend the first nine days does so. Yes, there's a question about the Canvas Parent app and the Canvas Student app. If you'd like to communicate with your child's teacher and have access to all of those great notifications that I showed you, you'll download the Canvas Parent app. The Canvas Student app is for your student or other um, young people to be able to submit work and talk to their teachers. Um, Cindy has another question. She just wanted to clarify, so I'm going to repeat it. Depending upon the choices that have been made at your school, um, there is a possibility that classes after the 21st will have only face-to-face -face students or only launched at home students or a combination of both. It all depends on how many uh, parents have requested each option at your school site at each grade level. I'm a super involved mom myself, and so I can understand Casey's question about are parents ever going to be able to make class visits or volunteer because it's hard to be away from your kiddo's school. But right now, we have to all dig in and really do our best to keep our kids safe. And so at the start of the school year, it is going to not be possible for parents to be able to visit classrooms openly. And I would encourage you to check out the health and safety guidelines that the district published earlier this week. But I can tell you that I've heard of some exciting opportunities that the district is popping, uh, you know, cooking up to be able to think of ways for parents to assist our students virtually, including some virtual mentoring programs and other opportunities. 
So stay tuned. This is new for everybody, but we want parents to stay involved and active in our communities, and we'll find a way to make it happen. Yes, Vanessa. So let's walk through that first day of school on August 10th again. On August 10th, your child is going to log into Launchpad at the same time that they would when the school bell would ring. So just like last year, if you were going to drop your child off at 845, you would do that again this year, but they'd be sitting in front of their computer. So at 845, they'll turn their computer on, they'll log into Launchpad, and they'll click on Canvas. Then they'll see their teacher's class, just like I showed you. And inside their teacher's class, they'll click on live lessons. And their teacher will be there just like I am right now, smiling and ready to greet them for that first day of school. Their school day will start at 845 or whatever time it normally starts at your school, and it will end at the same time it normally ends at your school. Okay. So let's go over the very last piece of information before we wrap up. And it's probably the most important one as a parent. What can you do to help prepare your family? Well, the first thing is, is that your school is going to be sharing some information with you about other back to school events, like virtual meet the teacher, and perhaps even a digital open house. Meet the Teacher will likely be this week, and the Digital Open House will be next week. If your school shares information with you about the Digital Open House, you should go, because there you're going to find out information about how to find live textbooks, how to access textbooks, how to check your, your student's online planner, your binder, and their grades, how to communicate with your kiddo's teachers, how to help them with homework, and you'll get more information about the fine structure and how to fill out the normal back to school forms about giving permission for photo and video use and directory information. And those forms are not new because of COVID. They've been around for decades. You're gonna receive information about the digital open house from your school through social media, email, and maybe even a regular postcard in the mail. So be on the lookout. You should receive information later this week or maybe even into the weekend. Now, if your child does not um, contact you about a digital open house, reach out to them. They must have other resources available for you to help, and it'll be important for you to be proactive. But remember that those events are school-based. You'll be hearing from the principal and other administrators at your school. This virtual Q&A session is district-wide, and it's for parents from all different schools. So we're starting out big and then narrowing down to the school. Tatiana has a great point. For her, she's not so much worried about being able to spend time in the classroom, but it's a brand new school and she's never even seen her child's classroom. I can understand why that might make you uncomfortable. But I've heard some really creative things that are happening right now. Some of our teachers are making virtual tours of their classroom, posting pictures of it all decorated for their students that meet the teacher. So I know that your school will find creative ways for you to feel like you're right there, even if you're at a distance. Students can bring their own masks, Marty. That's a great question. Your child has the opportunity to use a district provided mask or bring a mask from home that meets certain requirements. Oh, do I have any suggestions for parents with multiple children? I have four daughters that range in age from three to 16, so I hope all of you keep me in your prayers. And what I would suggest is that you have a dedicated workspace for each of them, and that that workspace is in a quiet location. And if you do happen to be working from home, that you come up with a signal for when your child needs help. I was working at home while my children were learning at home, and it was a challenge at first. We had to learn how to work together. And so the way that we did that is we paired our oldest children with our youngest children so that they could help them because our older daughters are more tech savvy naturally than our youngest. We also came up with a cup system in our house. We used red solo cups, green solo cups, and yellow solo cups, just like I did when I was a kindergarten teacher. And because I do a lot of web training, I had my teacher, my, my teachers, my kiddos put up their red cups when they needed help so that I knew I needed to mute my mic or step away from a conference call to be able to help them with something that their teacher couldn't help them figure out. 
That's not the only way to do it, but it's one little tip that might work for you. Here's another question about attendance. If my child starts on the 21st versus the 10th, will they get the classwork that was presented on those days? Um, that's going to be a school by school question. Um, typically, you get makeup work after you have entered school for the first time. So it was re it will really depend on how your school handles that. But our intent is never to penalize students. But do keep in mind that 10 days worth of content is a lot of content to miss in ELA, math, reading, and science. Um, and so it would be a tremendous amount for the teacher to provide all of that content. But the good part about Canvas is that all of their lessons and assignments will be visible to your child after they enter. Does virtual meet the teacher count as student attendance? No, because virtual meet the teacher occurs before August 10th. Hmm. This is a good question. Um, this is a question about parents eating lunch with their children. I'll be honest with you, I'm not the expert in that area. I would talk with your child's uh, principal about what options may exist for that. I'm, we have not discussed that in our department. So here's a question. Will teachers be giving grades, like grades on the assignments for the first nine days? Yes, they will. They are regular learning days. So all of the work that occurs within the first nine days would be graded just like it was a regular school year because we have to value the time and attendance that those students that are um, participating are and are contributing are doing. So the teachers will absolutely be grading work and providing feedback during that time. Maurice, I'm going to ask you to tackle this one in the chat box. It says, where can we find the QR code for the school if it's not currently listed in the Canvas parent app? So maybe you can uh, go ahead and post a, a quick response for those uh, parents at the newer schools like Sunshine and Summer Lake um, who might not yet be listed. Uh, what I'll share overall is that I'm going to talk with Canvas directly after this session to make sure that our new schools, that we have them either in the app or a clear process for how those parents will get access. Um, to just share overall, though, how Canvas access is, is processed, once you have access to Skyward Family Access, you have access to Skyward. And so, I'm sorry, to Canvas. So you would go to the parents.class link slash OCPS website log in and create your account and then there is a canvas ocps parent icon that would be clicked on and that's how you would you would gain access if you're logging in from a from a mobile device when you go and you click you could actually here's a little trick that's in there for the mobile device it actually really doesn't matter which school you pick to be honest with you as long as it's an ocps site because it's going to bring you to the parent access site and then it will actually log you in underneath your account and link you to your the correct child and the correct school. Oh, that is a good tip, Maurice. Would you mind putting in the chat box the link to the um, Skyward Parent Port or the OCPS Parent Portal for me? Um, and Anna, there was one last question that I saw that you just posted, and there was a question about face-to-face -face students switching classes. So remember, this particular session is about elementary school. We are having a different session for middle school and high school toward the end of the week. But for elementary school students, the intent is for them to um, stay together in one cohort as much as possible. So each school is determining exactly what that will look like. But here are some things that could happen. It could mean that special area teachers push into the classroom, like the art teacher coming to visit your, your student in their classroom instead of students going to the art room. It could also mean things like the PE teacher coming to visit the classroom. But each school is working through that based upon the teachers that they have available um, and also the way that the breakdown is working for each school in terms of how many face-to-face -face students there are. You're going to hear much more about that from your child's principal before August 10th. So don't worry, the information is coming. If you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to your school principal, and you can also email us at digitallearning at ocps.net. Thank you and have a great night.